Welcome to Matt Geo and my mini series on Gold Camp Road. In episode two, we'll focus on the haunted tunnels, the lore, and the evidence behind the claims. We'll also take a look into the history of Gold Camp's beginnings, as well as the darker side to Gold Camp Road. Without further ado, the tunnels on Gold Camp Road are legendary amongst those who know what and where they are. A quick Google of Point Sublime will get you to Gold Camp Road. When the pavement ends and the gravel begins, you're close. Only a few more miles and you'll see the first tunnel. Shortly after, the second tunnel appears. In the early hours of the day, the landscape is breathtaking, providing perfect views of Colorado Springs from a distance. Nightfall is accompanied by an ominous vibe. Even the simple things turn into spooky objects like tree branches and oncoming traffic. Rocks in the road produce long, distorted shadows over the uneven gravel road. The dips and potholes become dark voids. Occasionally, you'll find people walking in the dark that slowly become illuminated due to the slower speeds at night. Naturally, night brings out some rowdy kids and flash adults, I guess. I've seen crash vehicles up there many times on night drives. I believe they close the newly installed gates at sundown. So this may just be memories of a decade or older gold camp. When traveling at night, the time seems to drag on and the scenery is the same. Black with trees, shadows playing tricks on your eyes. It may be hard to imagine with such gorgeous footage, but hang in there. There's damn good reason for its legendary status. Between mining deaths, construction, vehicles going over the edge, body dumps, disputes, and accidents related to recreation, I believe there to be over 160 deaths around the area between what is known as the Bear Creek Park and the end of El Paso County Territory. The older I get, the less I realize I know. I died once in Afghanistan. I had the whole white light experience and everything, but I have zero idea what happens after we're actually dead. I have to say that after my experience, I am mind-bogglingly curious about death and the afterlife, if there is such a thing. I wonder if certain deaths are so traumatic that they leave a void or a dark energy. It is hard to explain some of the proof. I say proof as if anything that has gone through editing wasn't doctored, am I right? Loosely based internet documentations are only as credible as their source, and we don't know any of them. However, I would encourage you to watch the video linked in the description of some electronic voice phenomenon captured on Gold Camp by another YouTuber. It is interesting and insinuates that one of the spirits on Gold Camp Road is a female that can be heard uttering, Sheriff Paul, pause, frisked me. Then another recording says, they put her in a box uttered by a male. If there is such a thing as spirits, I could see disgruntled spirits lingering in anger for, well, ever. I was brought to Colorado Springs on orders from the Army in 2009. I'll never forget hearing the news that a Fort Carson soldier met with a girl with special needs on MySpace. Yeah, this was a long time ago. And took her up to Gold Camp Road where he raped and murdered her. If there's interest, I'll go into detail on some of the specific cases. With my 19 subscribers, though, don't hold your breath. Every town has a spot that is convenient for dumping bodies. In Phoenix, it's anywhere in the desert. In Chicago, there's many spots, but there's one specifically that I know of in Midlothian, Illinois. Even in Iraq and Afghanistan, the locals have their spots. Most body dumps meet a certain criteria. They are close to the crime, convenient, and close to a road, but also isolated enough that the body may not be found. That is almost never the case, though. Usually come summer when snow melts and everyone starts hiking. Fido brings back a human femur or a lower jawbone. It usually doesn't take El Paso County Sheriff's long after to recover the body. Okay, so that's enough backstory. So just remember most of that time is 160-ish. So here are a few of the urban legends. Tunnel 3 is the most infamous. There are many variations to the story, but one says that a school bus full of elementary school children were traveling from Cripple Creek to the Springs for some unknown reason when the third tunnel collapsed, killing all of the children, as well as the bus driver. Sometimes lightning and forest fires can destroy the wooden supports that keep the tunnel from collapsing, so that kind of makes sense. School bus, kids, fire, lightning, crushed. Okay. I've heard more far-fetched stories. 
Unfortunately for the kiddos in this case, I couldn't find a single report of this actually happening. I've been in the third tunnel myself, and there is zero remnants of a school bus. Unless the good lord himself came down, pulled an Easter on the school bus, I'm calling bullshit. Whether you believe in the afterlife or not, there's still a part of our human curiosity that wonders. Other legends say that near the tunnels you can hear laughter when you're all alone. That could be fairly easily explained by other people in the area. It is a popular local destination, and for good reason. It's awesome. I don't think anyone's captured any of these paranormal events on video. Otherwise, we'd believe it. Moving on to the next legend, though. Some have reported seeing figures carrying torches off in the distance. Okay, this one's pretty creepy. In modern days, when do we see people and figures running around with torches? Flashlights are very different from torches, and they produce a very distinct light. Not to mention this terrain, even the trails in the daytime can be a maze, more or less at nighttime. I mean, we're talking about miles and miles of trails. Nonetheless, this makes me think more of actual miners and their spirits with lanterns. I'm sure in the early 1800s, torches were still used, especially for miners. They didn't seem to get any creature comforts back then. I've never seen it personally, uh, but I guess we'll consider it valid that someone that cannot be named at some point saw figures carrying torches in the distance, while possibly under the influence. Most people up there at night are partying or wiling out, so to speak. Check. Another legend is that if you park in the tunnels at night, turn off your lights, and kill the engine or battery for some of you people, specifically tunnel 2, you'll sometimes feel a man or a dark figure of a man push the car uphill. I've been out here thousands of times, and I don't really consider it uphill. It's pretty flat. I'm sure someone sometime busted out a level, but again, you can't do this today because of the new gates. Of the people that do know of Gold Camp Road, I'd say 50% or so know someone that had an experience up there. Another legend says you'll find handprints all over vehicles after driving up there that don't match the hand sizes of the occupants in the vehicle especially when it comes to children. You will get a nice thin layer of dirt built up on your car when you go up there in the daytime. This is kind of creepy, but I got this. I'm pretty sure it's just oil from our hands that gets stuck on the vehicle, especially from children. Those sticky-handed little monsters probably leave all sorts of goop all over the side of the cars, which then collect dust, and that one's pretty easily explained. Whether it's one of these theories, something else, or paranormal activity, it's still fun to entertain the idea with a childlike sense of, well, maybe. I love the horror genre, so naturally I want to believe in something else. Even if it's just for the sake of authenticity of the genre. But too many people have all these sightings in common. Perhaps it's because human memory is terrible. I believe I heard Neil Tyson say that the worst part about memory is that we trust it. Something to that effect. The brain plays many tricks on us, and we don't notice on a daily basis. Like the fact that you can't see your nose. Or can you? It's 100% in your field of vision, but your brain filters it out. Crazy, right? Or how about this one? Did you know that when you remember something, your brain tries to save memory so you remember the last time you remembered that story. So over time, small variations become true. There are a lot of examples out there like that that make it really difficult to trust any eyewitness testimony, unless you trust the person giving the testimony. Even then, they're flawed also. Tired from work, drunk, or high, you get where I'm going. I'm sure of one thing here. This place is awesome, it's free, and for the time being, if the Broadmoor doesn't buy it and charge us to get in like other places, <clears throat> I feel truly blessed to have so much of this in my backyard, so to speak. If you are fortunate enough to live in Colorado Springs or plan to visit, you need a pencil and some time for this place. Any vehicle can make the drive and the scenery everywhere is amazing. There are still many places to park and go exploring. 
The entire open section of Gold Camp Road is not limited to the road itself. For mountain bikers, there are endless trails. The same goes for motorcycles. You are permitted to take a motorcycle to the third tunnel where traffic is restricted for four wheel vehicles. Difficulty for a normal person is a low to medium to hike to the third tunnel. You are literally cheating yourself by not visiting. It's not as populated as Garden of the Gods, Cave of the Winds, or Pike's Peak. Most people just visiting will never get the chance to experience Gold Camp Road. So get out and enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos. If you like my channel, please consider subscribing and sharing with those who may enjoy it as well. Take care and be safe. Matt Geo, 